When choosing something to watch, you may have seen the logo Dolby Atmos. And although this is an Atmos capable soundbar, I haven't been able to get Bruce to look at the ceiling yet. Let me explain. Five years ago, I published a video of my dog Bruce leaping and trying to catch virtual birds as they flew around my home theater. What stood out is that Bruce looked up at the ceiling at the sound of rain falling. The sound of rain was coming from the ceiling. I literally cut holes and put speakers in my roof. Now my soundbar has what's called Dolby Atmos enabled speakers. So there's two on top and they're at an angle to project sound towards the ceiling and then reflect down to the listener. The problem is that when I run the demo, Bruce chases the birds around the room and they end up at the front. And so when the rain sound effects happen, he's too close and they go straight into his face and he's like, why is the rain coming from the ground? What I would love is to have a bird sound effect go all the way around the room, then to the back and up to the ceiling. Can a soundbar trick Bruce into thinking there's a bird where there is no speaker? To make this happen, we need to learn how to mix what Hollywood uses in movies at home. I think step one is just to get a sound to come from a specific speaker. Why is the front so loud there? I think the feeling I've got is that I know that if I just keep trying, something will eventually work. I swear every day I wake up with an unhealthy amount of optimism <laughs> in what I can learn and accomplish. So let's start with what I know, right? Stereo sound lets you mix between the left and a right speaker. Surround sound adds speakers behind you. So now you can move the sound in front, behind, or beside the listener. But Dolby Atmos adds that height element. So now we're moving in three dimensions. So this is how audio engineers can put sounds like rain or birds chirping above you. At its peak, this deck is crazy. Like you can have 118 audio objects just flying around the room virtually. And a cinema can map all of their physical speakers into the Atmos setup. So if an object flies down the side of the wall and then across the room, every individual speaker will actually fire off that sound as it passes by. Thankfully, <laughs> a home theater is a lot less complex. Mine has five surround speakers, one sub and two height, making it a 5.1.2 system. My soundbar is a 4.1.2 as it doesn't have a center channel. This means I can use the Dolby Atmos bed, which will pre-render object movement to a 7.1.2 channel array. So if I place a sound object on a speaker in the virtual room, it should match the speakers in my real room. Big left, right, up. It's up, but it's not going through that. It's going through there. How? I'll give you the good news. Um, because I use DaVinci Resolve for my video editing, it's a part of Hollywood workflow. So it has Dolby Atmos mixing built in. The bad news is that when I export the video file, the audio doesn't seem to have the Atmos metadata stamped to it. So my Xbox and AV receiver are just like handing out channel arrangements like it's a lucky dip. The rear surrounds are going to the front and nothing is going to the top. Why won't it send the sound to the roof? But if I export audio only, then it gives it the stamp to say what channel is meant to go to each speaker. I can't get anything to play this file type properly, but I know the data is in there. So looking at some forums, it seems you would normally send like the video and the master audio to like Netflix or the Blu-ray making people, and they will put it together in the correct format for playback. Obviously I'm not doing that. Like I just want a bird to fly around my room. So I can get a Dolby Atmos file joiner. It's a few hundred US dollars for a one year license. However, they did have a trial and then after I asked for approval, it said we may not even reply then, so email us if it takes longer. And so since this was already taking me way longer than I wanted it to, I found a tutorial from Michael G. Wagner on YouTube, step by step on setting up an Amazon web server to add the video and audio to and join them together in the correct format. I haven't got a bill yet for the server use from Amazon, but I'm hoping it's the cheapest way out of all because, well, it's the one that I did. <laughs> Oh my days. With audio going to the correct speakers, I can now move a sound around the room. Doesn't move at all. Man, the software's got bugs. Yeah, dude, I can't honestly, honestly I can't make this up. I'm just so over it. Um, I don't know if it's just the beta software 
that I'm using at the moment. Like I've got hard left, hard right, and then it renders out both into the right channel. <laughs> what? At this stage, I'm over it. So I'm just putting an individual track to each individual speaker and then manually fading the sound in and out so it moves around the room. Dude, Bruce just looked at the ceiling speakers. Time for the sound bar. With the finish line in sight, I recorded my friend's bird, Floki, chirping and flying around the room so I can have some realistic sounds for my final mix. Ready? What is it? You didn't look up! <laughs> he did look up at the TV, but he didn't tilt his head to the ceiling. So I tried rain and he still didn't look up. Bruce's favorite activity is playing in water and not even splashing water with birds chirping made Bruce look up. Oh, and if you're wondering, Norman's super chill, so none of the sounds face him. It's so strange. The one kilohertz tone sounds like it's coming straight from the soundbar, but the white noise sounds like it's on the roof to me, obviously not to Bruce, but the rain feels like it's like in between the two. The experiment did not go as I thought. I can't help but think, is this a limitation of the soundbar? So I thought of one final test. See, there's so many different speaker configurations out there for an Atmos setup. My home theater has the two ceiling mounted options and the soundbar has two upward firing reflection type. Both though have these rear surrounds. You know, that's the biggest upgrade from a normal TV, just getting sound behind you for the action. Or if you're playing a racing game, you actually hear what side a car is trying to overtake from. Surround sound is great, but what you can do is get rear surrounds that project sound off the ceiling too. Now I reckon this would help pull those height elements back to be a bit more overhead, at least for my human ears. And although you can get setups to have more surround sounds with more reflection speakers, for this experiment, I don't know if that would make a difference. Bruce was already sitting in the perfect spot for a reflection point. But what if it has something to do with the speaker size? And so to rule out if it's just the sound bar or this reflection type of technology, I borrowed my brother's Dolby Atmos add-on module. These sit on top of traditional front firing speakers so you can convert a normal surround sound setup. I unplug the ceiling and plug them in to see if they provide a more immersive result. And Bruce looked up at them. His head went a little higher than the soundbar simply just because they sit higher than where the soundbar would. For me, it was much of the muchness, yeah? Like, it's a bigger speaker so you get a fuller sound, but the atmospheric elements were still the same kind of region and the one kilohertz test tone sounded like it came from it. So certain frequencies to my ears don't seem like they're getting reflected, but it's better than nothing. Audio is always about personal preference, so find what you enjoy and enjoy it. Speaking of which, if you liked today's video, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it, so you can see more innovative technology videos and custom tech projects. I'm gonna link on screen my review of the Yamaha X50A soundbar, where I blindfold my friends and family to put it against my full home theater setup. Thanks for watching, dude. See ya.